Let's continue. So now we're going to solve our re uh, reduced problem. The problem here has been become this one. Okay. So uh, I still have an IR constraint, but this is only for the lowest type. And also the IC constraints has been replaces, re replaced by monotonicity and the local IC. Okay. This is my reduced problem. I'm going to solve it and find the optimal solution in this video. Okay. So I'm going to do something that may be may make you surprised. In step three, I'm going to ignore the monotonicity and the local IC constraint. Okay, so, so wow, wow, what we are doing. Uh, that means what I am doing is to relax the thing that we have just proved to be the IC constraints. Okay, or we should say I just uh, remove removed or ignored all those IC constraints. Okay. Eventually, the reason that we want to do the equivalence proof in a previous video is that it will be easier to show our optimal solution can satisfy these two conditions. Okay. Oh, anyway, yeah, let's continue. Ignore them for a while. Let's see what are we going to do. I'm going to replace T by Q or by a function of Q. Uh, remind yourself, whenever you have discrete type problems, always you remove some constraints. And then for those uh, constraints remains, you find binding constraints. And with binding constraints, you replace those transfers by quantities. Right? I'm going to do the same thing here. So let me first decide, define one term, W of theta. This will be what happens after each agent finds its optimal solution or optimal type to report. We know it's theta, right? So that's why W of theta is the equilibrium payoff for each agent yeah, in this format. Okay? W of theta. Now, according to the envelope theorem, we know this. If we do W prime of theta, the first order derivative of theta. It can be found by first take the original function, do the differentiation first, and then plug in the optimal solution. Here, to remind you, theta is the parameter. Theta hat is the variable. Okay? So here, you do differentiation with respect to the parameter. You are asking how this parameter changes this quantity and then plug in the optimal solution as the function of the parameter. Okay, anyway, you do this, you choose this one, okay? Differentiation, you get only V. The key here is that theta is the only thing that you are differentiating with respect to. Theta head is a constant. So after you get this, you plug in theta head back, you get this. How theta affects W? only depends on your V of Q of theta. Okay? Well, that's our observation from the envelope theorem. And immediately, if we want to express W of theta, then we can do an in integration and take W prime as an integral, right? So, W theta compared with W theta lower bar has one additional term here. All you need to do is to start from here and collect all the difference, I mean uh, all the uh, increasing rates from theta lower bar to theta. And then this gives you your W. Okay. This is again an application of theta bay at Fb minus Fa is the integral of F prime of x dx from A to B. Yeah. So if you need. You may take this as a reference. Anyway, we have this, and then W prime has been found to be this one, right? And then here, immediately, because V function is always non-negative, so we know for all other types, they can earn something that is better or larger than W of theta hat, uh, sorry, W of theta lower bar. Okay? So let me use a graph to discuss this with you. Okay, 
Suppose for some contracts you decide, the lowest type get something here. Okay, the lowest type is payoff, equilibrium payoff. Then we're saying that when your type becomes larger, you're going to earn more, right? And eventually, W of theta must be increasing, right? So it will be some function like this, okay? And how does this tell you? If you want to maximize your profit, there's no reason to give each agent this part of money, right? Oh, you can take away this part of money from every agent without violating anything, okay? So this tells us that W theta lower bar is zero. Certainly this depends on the fact that W theta is greater than or equal to W theta lower bar for all theta. Depends on this is an increasing function so that you can push down this curve. If this function is blah 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 something weird, then you don't have this result. But anyway, we have it here. Okay? So you have this, and that means W of theta is nothing but this simple integral. So now, how may we replace t by q? Oh, w theta is this thing. So that means if we take t to the left hand side, w to the right hand side, t will be the first term is this guy, and then minus w. w is this one. Okay? So that means I can express t as a function. Of Q. Yeah. And also, uh, if I can find all those optimal quantities, I can decide the optimal transfers. Yeah. The optimal QT pair must satisfy this equality. So I'm going to replace T in the objective function to get an unconstrained single variable, uh, I mean uh, only Q problem. So my problem will become, I'm going to maximize something with respect to Q of theta, the original integration, and sorry, to theta upper bar. And then I have, remind yourself this is T minus CQ, right? T is this guy. So T, let me write T here. This is T minus C Q theta. Okay, you may want to verify that this is true. This is your um, reduced up, uh, reduced objective value. Find a Q to solve this problem. Before we can do something like first order conditions, we need to somehow handle this double integration, right? We don't really know how to deal with double integral when we have uh, these optimization problems. So we need to somehow uh, take away this. And the way of doing that is integration by parts. So let me show you. Okay, so the thing that we really care about is the following. Differentiation of V. So 
v is the integral of this one, which is capital M. I need to do a plug-in from lower bar to upper bar. And then, this term must minus v du minus an integral. Okay? v again is f of something. Right? du. For du here, you need to apply the Leibniz integral rule again. u goes here. And that's all. Okay? And now, uh, you have one thing and two things. You need to somehow find a way to further simplify them. Theta lower bar and theta upper bar into the first term. And that's going to give me what? For theta lower bar, it will give me zero. From myself to myself, the integral is zero. For upper bar, I would get theta lower bar, theta upper bar, v of q of x, dx. And then for f of theta upper bar, it will be one. The probability for the type to be lower than the highest type is 1. Okay? So, nothing there. And then, yeah, so this is my first, first term after plugging. And then, for the second term, let me write it down again. Like this. Okay, so now, integral. Integral from the uh, from the same origin to the same destination. If I further remove this dummy variable and replace it by theta, then it's easier for you to recognize. Oh, yeah, we can do a further simplification. Okay, this part is identical, so the only difference is one minus f of theta, and then we have this. Right? And then d of theta, uh, d theta. Yeah. This is what we have for this double integral. So, my problem, my problem here is actually the following. Now I'm going to replace the double integral by this one. This part is identical, so let me write it down. Okay, this is my first term, and then the last term. And then the second term. The second term now becomes something inside. Right? Because this is here. Okay, the bounds are the same. And then you also d theta, d theta are identical. But here you need to divide this part by small f. Like this. Okay? After you do this, this term times small f cancel each other, you get 1 minus f. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I forgot one. cancel each other, you get this. This go back to your original integral. Okay? So it's very good. Now, after all these efforts, we find something that is doable. We want to maximize this with respect to q. q is a function, but that just means for every point of theta, for every value of theta, we find an optimal quantity to maximize this integral, okay? We only need to worry about this integral, okay? Because 
at each point we find the optimal solution, then the collection of all those optimal points gives me the optimal quantity. Okay? So for the, the terms remaining here, okay, inside the integral, I can do a differentiation with respect to a few of theta. Yeah, because when theta is fixed, this is just a single number. Do a differentiation, first order condition, I get the following. should satisfy this equality. Otherwise, it's impossible for it to be an optimal solution. Okay? So, this is our first order condition. Yeah. Let me um, further simplify it. Somehow, we want to take V prime outside everything. And the coefficient would be theta minus this ratio. This should be equal to C. This is how you solve for your optimal quantity. So optimal quantity should satisfy this first order condition. And certainly, uh, if you need, that happens when this part is positive. If this part is negative, you know you're going to uh, eliminate those consumers by serving them with quantity zero. Yeah, but that's um, we don't we typically do not care about that. So. Eventually, for each theta, calculate this part and then find a unique Q star of theta that satisfies this equation. And then for T, you can find that with the equation we just provided to you. And that's the optimal quantity and transfer contract. Okay? Yeah. So in the last lecture, uh, I mean the last video later, we're going to discuss what's happening here. and. How may we find? How may we get? Uh, what may we get with this solution? Okay, take a break. <laughs>